presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me Welcome to our nine o'clock service here at Austin Grove Baptist Church. Uh, if you're here, uh, you're uh, realizing that I am uh, not here today. Uh, Cindy and I are away uh, celebrating our 50th uh, wedding anniversary. And uh, I certainly appreciate uh, your attendance here and you being here. And if, if we do have any visitors, we're glad to have you also uh, here. And we appreciate Baxter and others that are kind of stepping in and, uh, and uh, uh, here for us uh, uh, this day so we can be uh, away. But we'll be back on this coming Wednesday night here. If you got your Bible, I'd like to invite you to turn uh, here this morning. Uh, to the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Uh, and uh, 
We'll be uh, beginning in the first verse of that chapter, and we're going to read uh, six or seven verses there uh, in the first part of that chapter, if you would turn there if you'd like, or you can just listen uh, to this. We're going to be talking about preaching Christ, Jesus as Lord. And uh, Paul writes letters to, uh, uh, to the churches that the Holy Spirit allowed him to establish and what is a church? It's a body of believers that are uni unified and united together in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit led, would lead Paul, Barnabas, Silas, and Timothy and others to uh, go into certain parts and certain towns and villages. And as they would, then the Holy Spirit would uh, devise a way and an opening to where that they would be able to, in turn, uh, they would see men and women, boys and girls, uh, come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And keep in mind, Paul was going to uh, many places that were uh, mostly Gentile, even though there was some Jewish uh, groups that would be uh, certainly in all the, uh, the cities here that they would go into, most of the groups there. So look with me here at uh, the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Uh, we're going to begin reading with verse 1, if, if we may. I'm reading out of King James. Whatever translation you have is fine. Look with me now as the scripture says. Therefore, seeing that we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Paul always counted, counted it a privilege to serve Christ. That was not always the case when he was Saul of Tarsus. Uh, that was the furthest thing from his mind would be to tell anybody anything positive or good about Jesus Christ. Uh, but when Jesus uh, had, uh, uh, had the opportunity there to uh, talk with uh, Saul there on that road to, to Damascus, and he had that encounter, uh, Saul's life was never ever the same. And as Paul would go, and uh, when his name was changed later, and um, he would write letters back to the church. Letters uh, were very much uh, so important back in that day and age, and uh, someone would have to bring those letters to the uh, to the body of believers, so that in turn these letters could be read. Uh, probably not just one time, but a number of times. And it would reflect back some of the feelings that Paul had and Silas and Timothy and Barnabas and others that, that they had for the people of love and a drive and determination and a care and a concern that they would have for what they had when they were there in person, but they wanted to hear from them. You know, we say that we like to hear from uh, families. In this day and age, we will uh, email uh, or text. Uh, calling is becoming not as popular as it once was. What We thought that was the greatest thing 25 years ago, and it was that we were able to call and talk to one another. Uh, so, so Paul would write the letters now. He was writing to them. He said, I want you to, to realize that, uh, that I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity uh, to share uh, in the beginning of a ministry among you. And that's really what he's saying here in verse 1. He's saying, I have, uh, God has given me mercy. And, and Paul knew that the mercy of Christ was continually uh, put upon his life. Because he knew that he was, in fact, he knew, even used the terminology that uh, he was the chiefest of sinners. Uh, and there was not many that would argue with him. Because certain, certainly that was the case. But I want you to, to look at the last phrase here in, in verse 1. Three words. He said, we're, we faint not. In other words, we're not uh, weak uh, need. We're not to the place that we are afraid, uh, but we write to you in boldness, just as Paul, when he was present with the church at Corinth, 
he would talk to them in boldness, not of the boldness of Paul, but in the boldness of the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit brought an, uh, uh, it brought into the existence and into the lives of, of people within the early church and churches that was unheard of. Uh, they could not uh, discern why uh, ones would come with such determination, with such strength, with such resolve, that they would uh, be able to preach and teach Jesus in, in such a bold manner. Look at me, verse 2. But Paul writes, he says, But I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. I have, in other words, what Paul's really saying, he said, I've told you what's, I have reminded you of what God's word says, what is right and what is wrong. In this case, he says, what is dishonest. And he says, I'm not walking in a manipulative stage or point or the, here the scripture says, in craftiness. I'm not seeking to deceive you. There are many uh, that I hope and pray I'm wrong, but there are many that sometimes they use such a spirit of manipulation. And Paul wanted the people to be very, very, uh, uh, to note that, that this was not the case in his life and in the ministry that they had the privilege of sharing in. So he said, I have renounced uh, the, those things that are hidden, that are dishonest, not only in your eyes, but in the eyes of the Lord. And I'm not walking in that uh, manipulation status or in that thing of trying to be a deceiver of you. But I want you to look at the, at the middle part here, verse 2. He said, nor am I handling the word of God deceitfully. In other words, I'm not using God's word in a deceitful manner, but I'm using God's word and I'm bringing it to you in the presence of and in the power and direction of God himself by way of the Holy Spirit that, was, that is leading Paul's life. And I think they very, very much so, they were able to discern that. But Paul's going to remind them of that. He said, I'm bringing to you, or I'm handling the word of God, not deceitfully. But he said, but it's by the manifestation of the truth. The truth is. Uh, I'm bringing it to the surface. I'm bringing it to uh, in front of you so that truth may win out. That truth will uh, be that determining force, that element that will bring about that element of change in your life. Uh, what's going to bring about change in 2022? If something brings about change, it's, it's, it's going to be that you and I, that we realize that we've got such a need and that the Word of God or the Holy Spirit shows us our faults, our sin, our indifference, and that, and that each of us that we recognize that we must change. We need to change. It is so important that we're doing that very thing. So very important. And he goes on and says to us here, uh, we're, no, we're not bringing the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Uh, here we are. Now, let me just, let's bring everything together here in verse 2. Let me share verse 2 with you once again. But having renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. I'm not doing either one of these. Not, not handling the word of God in a deceitful or uh, manner. I am not walking in my own craftiness. But I'm bringing the truth uh, uh, there. And, uh, but by manifestation of the truth, as I bring the truth to you, I am not commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Look at verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In other words, if individuals that are listening to this letter that is, that, uh, uh, is going to be read to you, and they do not know Christ 
as their personal Savior, uh, then it, it may appear that the gospel is hidden from them. Well, if it is hidden from them, here's what Paul writes to them. If they're not getting it, they're not really coming to the realization of what real truth is, and that is the Word of God, then uh, uh, they need to take a, a long, hard look at their own individual lives for they're lost. Now, let me recount this. Look with me at verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Paul would write and tell us uh, many times it's the preaching and teaching of the gospel is foolishness. Here Paul writes to the early church at Corinth and he's saying to them that the gospel, it, it, it is proclaimed and it's not that the gospel is not effective. It's simply that there is a refusal on the part of those that are listening that are lost and they are refusing to acknowledge who God is and the significance and importance that God is seeking to play in their lives, they'll have no part of it. They're simply saying, it doesn't matter. I do not need God. They're lost, is what he's saying. Look at me at verse 4. In whom the God of this world. Notice this. And, and notice this is a little g God. This is not uh, uh, the one and only God, the Lord that you and I serve. In whom the God of this world. Look what it says hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. It, now this is God saying, I did not blind their minds, but they allowed the world to manipulate their mindset and what they're thinking, how they're walking, the direction that they're going in. They allowed the world to do that very thing to them. So he said, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. That's the lost. Look at the middle part of verse 4. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ. The light of Christ is still shining. It's there. But they have allowed and they have chosen, the lost have chosen to totally ignore it and to say, it's not there. The light's not there. The gospel's not being proclaimed. This is not the word of God. And this is where they were saying, and you see, the world or Satan literally will manipulate our minds, our mindset and our thinking to where we're going to say, ah, it's, this, this is not right. But yet the, the whole time, the, the gospel that has been proclaimed to the same gospel, same message, and there were hundreds, if not thousands, that received the gospel. And yet there were hundreds, if not thousands, that simply said, that meant nothing to me. Why did it mean nothing to them? It wasn't that God does not love them. Absolutely not. God loved the ones that received him, and he also loved the ones that rejected him. But God was willing... But simply their eyes and their heart, their conscience, and their uh, own way of thinking, it was blinded by themselves, by the choices that they had made, and by their refusal within the very depth of their heart and spirit to recognize that God's spirit was moving all around them, but they would not allow that, the light of Christ. Paul says to them, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ is there. Who is the image of God that should shine unto them? And God is there allowing his message to be displayed in such a magnificent, powerful way. And yet there was refusal from the very hearts and souls and minds of many that were listening. This is why as Paul's writing, he said, look, we have brought the gospel to you. We've not brought it with myself or any of the others to be lifted up, but to lift Christ up. And if you have not gotten it, you need to do a little soul searching because that soul, you're within your soul, you are not and have not, you have not 
listen and been responsive to what God is saying of where you need to be and what you ought to be doing. Now, let's go on a little further. Look with me at verse 5, if you would. For we preach not ourselves, but we preach Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. In other words, we're not uh, uh, lifting up the name of Paul, Barnabas, Silas, Timothy, or any of the others. We're not lifting ourselves up. We're lifting Jesus Christ up. We are simply a servant of the Most High God. We're a servant of Christ. We're doing that which Christ has commanded us to do. We're bringing the good news or the gospel to you, a lost people. That Jesus has simply sent us here to tell you that he loves you. And forgiveness is yours for the asking. Look with me at verse 6 as we continue. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the, God, of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God has commanded the light to shine and it's shining. And if you're not getting it, it's because you closed your heart and mind and soul to acknowledging who Christ is in your life. It's not that Christ's light is not available to you. It's not shining for you. It's simply you have chosen to ignore the light of Jesus. Folks, that has not changed today in 2022 as we come to the, here uh, now to the first Sunday in June of 2022. It hasn't changed. Look with me at verse 7. We're going to close. But we have this treasure in earthly vessel, in earthen vessels. The treasure he's talking about, we've got Jesus Christ in this earthen vessel or this fleshly body. And I am, I am coming and have stood before you and I have proclaimed Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm simply a servant of his commanded and led by the Holy Spirit in his presence. And here's the last part of verse 7, what he says, that the excellency of the power may be of God, that the power and that God may be seen. And look at the last phrase here in verse 7 of what the scripture says. It's not of us. Paul wanted to very much be sure that everyone realized that he was not proclaiming Paul as Lord. He was not doing that at all. So let me challenge you here. We can be all around Christ, all around the gospel, all around the proclamation and the carrying forth of Jesus Christ, and yet we can choose to ignore it. And what Paul says and what God's word says is simply here is that look, you need to take a long, hard look because it may just be. Maybe you've not given your heart and life to me like you should. Or you went through some motions of doing so, but you've lacked something. And there were many that were lacking that true personal commitment. Oh, they knew that Christ was to come. Some were going to acknowledge him as having come given his life, buried, and resurrected. Those were the ones that were, had truly made that commitment to follow Jesus Christ completely and totally. And yet there were others. This is just a, a story. This is just something that's being said, and you're trying to manipulate us to have a little influence on us. And what they were saying to God was, God, I'm not buying that. It's not even you that's around with. Boy, are they, were they wrong. Anybody that's thinking in that manner today in 2022, boy, are they wrong. There is so many people here in our community and their neighbors and friends and co-workers that they, too, have never made a personal decision to follow Christ. If Christ was to call them home today, there are many that will not enter heaven's gate 
And it will not be because Jesus did not love them or does not love them. It will not be because Jesus does not have a place for them. It's simply that they had no place for Jesus Christ in his or her life. So let me encourage you. If you've got friends and neighbors and relatives that do not know Christ, or they're not actively involved in serving Jesus, talk to them. Pray for them. So that they're going to have that new life, that new beginning, that new direction, that new birth that Jesus Christ was desiring for them. So let me challenge you to do that. We're going to, uh, Baxter's going to play a, a, just a very short hymn. This altar is going to be open if you need to come. There'll be some of our deacons, someone here that will talk with you if you need to have someone to talk with. But I pray that God's Holy Spirit will challenge you right where you're at here this morning and let his will be done. And this could be the day that a new beginning could happen in your life if you'll just say yes to God. Pray with me here for just a moment before we play, uh, play this hymn of invitation. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day and the blessings you've granted to us. I thank you for the writings that you inspired Paul to write to an early church over 2,000 years ago. And the things, Father, that you reminded them in that day. But, Father, I know that you are reminding us here on the first Sunday in June, in 2022, you're reminding us of the very same thing that we need. We need to take a long, hard look at where we're at in a relationship. So, Lord, as we get ready to sing a hymn of invitation, then go our separate ways, either the Sunday school or, uh, or home or for whatever else that this day may hold for us, Father, let your will be done in every life. And we'll always thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Oh, come to the altar 
isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down.